In 2016, I got to go to Glasgow, Scotland and meet with a group of people I'd been playing Battlefield with for several years now at that point. Um, we had never met each other before. Um, some of us were from America, some of us were from uh, England, some from uh, Scotland, some from Germany, some from other parts of Europe. We only got a small group of us together. Unfortunately, we could not get everyone, but um, what an amazing time to put a face to people that you've only heard their voice for so long. Uh, we didn't miss a beat. It was like we'd known each other for years because, of course, we kind of had. Um, we spent a whole night in Glasgow, drank probably too much, went paintballing the next day. Uh, probably should have done those two things in a different order. Uh, yeah, some not everything stayed inside of the stomach uh, during the safety briefing at the paintball field. But the point is, is these people are just as real friends as anyone. And that's what today's episode is all about. Just a little over a week ago, I spent my birthday in Jacksonville, Florida, meeting up with a couple of, of these old friends that we hadn't seen each other in, in six years now at this point. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Keg and Coin, we stopped at as it was our first stop, totally by accident, found this place and found a game called Killer Queen, and there was a little uh, tournament going on this week, free to play. So there's three different objectives. One of the objectives is to collect, um, I don't know the actual number, but it's all the berries. Yeah. Put them in your hive, fill up all the holes in the hive. The second objective is to drive the snail down here. So each team has a different side, and hopping on the snail, you drive that all the way. That's another objective. And then the third objective is to, um, third objective is to uh, kill the other queen three times. So any one of those three successfully wins? Exactly, yeah. So one of the most unique things about Killer Queen in this arcade setting is that it uh, pits two five-player teams against each other on two separate screens attached to the same console. Um, we had no clue what we were doing, but the, the group of people in this uh, place, Keg and Coin, were just so inviting. Couldn't thank them enough for being so kind to us and letting, uh, letting us just jump into their into their situation. Um, I did get a chance to interview one of the, the gentlemen who kind of promotes the event. Unfortunately, I forgot to get his name, but here's that. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been playing Killer Queen since late 2018, maybe early 2019, so three, maybe four years. What's your general, uh, how do you feel like this has grown over the last, over those years? So, pre-COVID, it was very strong. We would get 40 people probably a week, and then COVID hit it pretty hard to the point where we were only getting, you know, 10 to 15. But uh, I would say it's come back again, you know, we're getting 20, 25 people a week. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you see everyone, man, because the, the typical people that play this game aren't typically gamers, you know. The people go into a bar, they see an arcade game, and then they play this game, and they're like, wow, five on five arcade game. That's a unique idea. Very unique experience. The the, the, uh, the the dual the dual screen thing too, right? You know, like playing right. against the other side. Too. Right. And a lot of people that I see for the first time when they play, they don't even realize that the other people on the other side of the cabinet who they're playing against. Yeah. They're like, oh, am I playing bots? You know, AI? What, what's going on? Here? So what what's your what's been your, what's been the what's the coolest part about having started this, and what's like been the coolest thing to see happen or grow? Uh, people getting involved in the competitive aspect of the game. So there's scenes across nation for this game and it's a pretty technical game despite only having one button and a joystick sure. so there is a competitive side especially with the teams so uh you know personally i, I travel to tournaments and stuff out of state and then to you know new york milwaukee dallas dc everywhere. E everywhere to play this game and the game plays differently at a competitive level and i love seeing people come out and immediately get attached to the game start getting interested in that little game. Wow. Thank you. Appreciate you talking to me. Yeah, no worries. Appreciate it. So after that experience, we even got a couple of these fine fellows to tag along with us to a couple of the places uh, in, in this little place in Jacksonville, and uh, we just had a wonderful evening. Now, uh, I was in Florida, and it wouldn't be Florida if you didn't uh, take a trip to the shooting range. I would have loved for this trip to have been a little longer than the four days it was, but we did finish off in a place called St. Augustine, which is America's oldest city, if you didn't know that. Uh, pretty cool. 
Um, just a wonderful time. So I guess the moral of this whole thing is, is if you feel like you know some people pretty well, you're an adult as well, um, and you have an opportunity to meet some of these folks, do it. Go do it. Uh, you're not only going to meet some cool people, but you're also going to go somewhere maybe you've never been before. It's always worth trying. Enjoy yourself. Have a great week.